Good morning and welcome to the online service of the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of the Swannanoa Valley for May 16th, 2021. My name is Spence Foscue and I'm a member of the Board of Trustees. These are words from Layla Ibrahim. It's a blessing each of us was born. It matters what we do with our lives. What each of us knows about the divine is a piece of the truth. We don't have to think alike to love alike, and we don't have to do this alone. Please join us after the service on Zoom for conversation and connection. And now let the service begin. Life is a gift for which we are grateful. We gather in community to celebrate the glories and the mysteries of this great gift. Our opening words are from Kishab Chandra Sen, Unto the Church Universal. Unto the Church Universal, which is the depository of all ancient wisdom and the school of all modern thought, which recognizes in all prophets a harmony, in all scriptures a unity, and through all dispensations a continuity, which abjures all that separates and divides, and always magnifies all that unifies and brings peace, which seeks truth in freedom, justice in love, and individual discipline and social duty, and which shall make of all sects, classes, nations, and races one global community. Unto this church and unto all its members, known and unknown throughout the world, we pledge the allegiance of our hands and hearts. This is hymn number 318 we would be one.
This is the time when we as a community share our joyful events and those of concern as members of our UU extended family we have created. So as you wish, please let us all share in your joys and concerns. For those of you who did not wish to share your joys and concerns, we keep you in our hearts. Hi, I'm Carolyn Shorkey, and I have offered to um, take a few things off of Evan Yannick's plate since he's now serving as our uh, Board of Trustees President for Church. Um, so please send your joys and sorrows to me on Thursday, either through um, you know a video that you can send me or some words through a phone call or email. Um, and if you could do that on Thursday, I really would appreciate it. I proofread on Friday morning, and I'd like to get the service uploaded onto YouTube and Facebook um, on Friday so that then I'm not having to um, worry so much about any kind of technical glitches getting in the way at the 11th hour on Saturday. So um, appreciate you doing that, and thank you. Bye. Now is the time that we ask you to share with us your generosity. As you know, your cont contributions to our congregation are put to good use in our community, especially during this pandemic. The meditation is the glories of peace from the book of Michael in the Bible, chapter four, verse three. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall all sit under their own vines and fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid. This is hymn number 113, Where is Our Holy Church? happy to welcome back to our pulpit, our virtual pulpit, the Reverend Chris Andrews. Chris is a native of Louisiana, where he served as a United Methodist minister for more than 40 years. Currently, he's executive director of Rebuilding Together Baton Rouge, and he's a leader of Jubilee Pioneers, an ecumenical open community of spiritual seekers, and a creation-centered theologian Currently, he lives in Baton Rouge, where he is a beloved Hellraiser. It's certainly nice to be back again with friends from the uh, Swannanoa Unitarian community. I wish that we could do this in person, but of course, we know that we're living under extraordinary circumstances. You have been um, faithful and valiant and have coped with this in ways that are 
uh, beyond good, and I thank you for that, and for your continuing witness and your presence there on uh, that beautiful street that your building is located at. Uh, one day soon, maybe we can see each other again face to face. So it's always an, a deep uh, honor to be invited to uh, share in a moment of reflection and to offer a, a short sermon for a fine congregation. And uh, today I want to talk about diversity, because it seems to me that if there's anything that uh, is at the center of what Unitarian Universalism is, it is the affirmation of diversity. The idea that we're all one, uh, that's the Unitarian part, and that yet there is great diversity in this world, that's the Universalism part. So out of my own tradition, from uh, the two um, Hebrew and Christian scriptures, I wanna remind you of some words that are sacred to me and that will focus us today. First of all, from the Hebrew scriptures, Genesis, where the Tower of Babel is being constructed, and um, the Holy One sees that and says, I don't like it. And so the text reads, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand one another's speech. And from the Jesus part of the scriptures, from the Gospel of Matthew, the words of Jesus who said, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. So those are the holy words, and with that, we bring this reflection. Not very long ago, I was at Costco. I suspect you have a Costco there in the Black Mountain or Asheville area, and uh, buying a set of tires, nothing particularly religious or holy about that, but I had to wait a while for my tires to be put on my car, and I enjoyed people watching. So I took a seat at the little kiosk that they have where you can buy a soft drink or something and just watch the shoppers coming and going. Now, Baton Rouge isn't a large community, um, and yet I was amazed as I watched for about an hour this flow of humanity, I was amazed at the diversity that I saw. There was a woman in a sari with a red dot on her forehead passed by, and there were people who were wearing head dressings, identifying them as members of the Muslim faith. There was a man with that little skull cap on. Obviously, he was of the Jewish community. And no doubt there were a lot of unidentified Protestants and Catholics, and certainly in that mix, there had to be some Unitarian Universalists who don't wear defining garb, but are there all along. Humanists, believers, non-believers, they were all there in this unending mix of humanity that was parading before my eyes. And I thought to myself, this is really a treat. This is rich diversity. But now here's the issue, if you're of a certain mindset, if you are what I call old skill, old school, it may cause some unease when you see that kind of diversity. Uh, when you see somebody who is not of your tradition, or when you are a person who believes that the only way to truth is your way, then diversity may not bring much comfort. But what if we said yes to diversity? And what if we celebrated it? What if we thought that different is not deficient, different is just different, and out of our differences, there come great blessings? It seems to me that this is an important moment in our country's history, in the world's history, for us to think about this, to reflect upon it, to say yes to that which is different from ourselves, because certainly we've all been caught up in the uh, either agony or perhaps the conversation about immigration, about uh, different cultures trying to merge and live together under one common geographical root, roof. And it has brought great pain and turmoil to the world when people cannot acknowledge that somebody different from themselves are still people, are still valued, are still individuals of worth. Now, Jesus had something to say about this, I think. At the end of the Gospel of Matthew, the text that I just focused on, Jesus said that when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and I know a lot of Unitarians don't get into that kind of language, but just bear with me for a moment. He says that when he comes in his glory, it's going to be as though the king is sitting on a great throne, looking out at all the peoples of the world, and facing the final duty of separating the, the sheep from the flock of goats. 
sheep and goats who will have grazed together side by side for ages, who will have eaten the same grass, drunk from the same stream, slept under the same stars. But at last, Jesus says, it'll be time for the goats to go one way and for the sheep to go another, the great divide. And the story goes that none of the people standing before the throne are going to know which they are, and they're going to be surprised. Because in the end, the criteria for telling them apart is not going to be concerned with their beliefs or their allegiances, but with everything they do as to how they treat the least important people in their lives, especially, especially the stranger. And so the text reads, Lord, when did we see you? And the king will reply, I was naked, I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was sick, I was imprisoned. And that's when you saw me. So in the deeper meaning of that story, I think, is that the mistake sometimes that is made is to think that the holy, the sacred, the mystery is found in just one body and not in all bodies. That it lives behind just one face and not in all face. That you, the holy sees us through one set of eyes and not all sets of eyes. No, no. One of the ways that the holy smuggles itself into our midst is by showing us, showing up as a stranger in need of welcome. Welcome, welcome is the king's solution to the problem of the stranger. Always has been, always will be. All those strangers at Costco that I sat looking at that afternoon, could they not be the sign of holiness in many different disguises? I think this is a perspective that's worth our deep reflection, indeed worth our affirmation. The supreme religious challenge, wrote Jonathan Sachs, is to see God's image in the one who is not in our image. And if that's true, then the stranger, the one who does not look or think or act like we do, may offer the best chance at seeing past our own reflections to see the living, shimmering, holy that lives in everyone and in everything. I invite you on this day, say yes to diversity. You know, many famous biblical stories involve religious strangers, Romans, Samaritans, Canaanites, Syro Syrophoenicians, people who worshiped other gods, who worshiped in unorthodox ways, like those three wise men in the Christmas story, those Persian mystics. Maybe there was Zoroastrian priest who pointed to the specialness of the Bethlehem child. And perhaps the point of the Bible the point that it's making is to teach us that God works through strangers. How's that? God works through strangers. That God sometimes sends people outside of our own religious community, outside of our own political community, outside of our own cultural community, sends those strangers to us to bless those of us who are inside our community. It doesn't seem to matter biblically if the main characters understand God in the same way or call God by the same name, the divine blessing is effective, and because of the stranger, the faith lives on. The Bible has many stories as to how strangers keep faith going. There is Pharaoh's daughter, who certainly was not a Hebrew, who plucked the baby Moses, a Hebrew, out of the river Nile and raised him as her own. There is Jethro, uh, Jethro who was a Midianite priest, who sheltered Moses and gave him security in a time of great danger. There was a story of Ruth, who was a Moabite, sworn enemies of the Hebrew people, who ends up becoming the great, great grandmother of the great king of the Hebrews, King David. There is Cyrus the Persian in the book of Isaiah, who ends the Babylonian exile and lets the children of exile return to their home, the Holy Land. So the point I'm trying to make is, is that the greater story says that without a doubt, strangers play an important role in the story of faith. Say yes to diversity. In the Torah, the most sacred part of the Hebrew scriptures, there are more commands to love the stranger than there are to love the neighbor. 
Did you know that? More commands to love the stranger than to love the neighbor. Well, one of the things I appreciate so very deeply about my Unitarian friends is how you demonstrate a love for the stranger. Some time ago in our community here in Baton Rouge, we had a tragic incident. A young exchange student from Japan who was living with a, a beautiful family, friends of mine, and uh, sharing their home and the cultural experience of being in America. They had a young son who was the same age as this young man from Japan. And the two had formed a bond and had become like brothers. And it was a beautiful experience of intercultural, international exchange. Came Halloween, and these two young fellows go out to a Halloween party where they were invited. But inadvertently, they got confused on the address and they went to the wrong house. Now, the young man from Japan, Yossi was his name, uh, was known by his classmates and everyone who saw him for his incredible antics as a dancer. He had a body that seemed to be made of elastic. And he could move and groove and jive, and it was just a beautiful thing to see. So Yossi goes dancing down the drive, up the driveway to this house thinking there's a party inside, but rings the doorbell to be confronted by someone who doesn't know who Yossi is and who is absolutely horrified that this strange looking young fellow doing his dance antics at the door is at his house. The individual who opened the door took a pistol and shot that young boy and killed him. It was an international incident ended up being something that even the White House got involved in. Perhaps you remember it had happened many years ago. Yossi's family was, of course, notified of the tragedy of the death of their son. Our community was in shock and grief, and we had to do something to recognize that moment. And where did we go? The entire community turned to our Unitarian friends. And the Reverend Steve Crump, who for many years was the minister here in Baton Rouge and was the minister of your own friend, uh, Robbie Madden. He led the service of memorial for Yossi. I went and Steve did a beautiful and masterful job. And as I stood there in that crowd that evening, such a sad event, I felt my heart overflowing with thankfulness for Unitarian Universalist for the openness that they exhibit and live, for their willingness to embrace the different, knowing that out of our diversity, there comes great blessing. Tragically, in our community, there were ministers who said they would not have a service for that young man because, why? He had not punched the religious ticket of their particular doctrinal formula. He did not look like a lot of people who live in America look. He spoke a different language. He came from a country that had once been adversarial to America, all of that. And how tragic is that? In stepped Stephen Crump, Unitarian minister, and he did a masterful and beautiful job of honoring a beautiful life, of comforting a grieving family, and of helping to bring some healing to a shocked and shattered community. Friends, this, I think, is one of the great tasks of the religious community today, to somehow address, speak to the divides that sometimes create such pain and elicit such energy in our country, to say that we really are all one. We really are. The other story in our text today is that story from the Hebrew scriptures about the Tower of Babel. Now, the Tower of Babel was a massive effort to scale into heaven so that people could find God. But the story says that God found the plan for the Tower of Babel to be not in his favor. And he stopped the project, and he did it by confusing the speech of the people. It's a strange story. But what it's saying, I think, is, is that when people can't understand one another, they can't make things happen. They can't build. They can't accomplish their goals. So maybe that story is ancient story that it is, teaching us that we're not meant to go to God alone, 
or just with our own tribe. They were meant to go together, enriched by one another's faith and wisdom and insights into the way of the holy mystery. In the second chapter of Acts in the Christian scriptures, there is this moment known as Pentecost. And what happens is people come together and though they're all different, somehow in the most mysterious of ways, they can suddenly understand one another. Even though they're not speaking the same language, they understand one another. And maybe what that story is suggesting is, is that God, if you believe in God, or the Holy, if you can affirm that, is multilingual. That the Holy speaks in Hindu, in Buddhist, in Jewish, in Muslim tongues, and so many more. That we can learn from one another, and we can be blessed. I think that divinity has many faces, speaks many tongues. And each of us, this is grace, each of us is a fractal, a tiny reflection of the face of God. So what is ultimately important is not so much what you believe, but how you live with justice and compassion and with love. So live with this as your guide. When your religion tries to come between you and your neighbor, always, always choose your neighbor over your religion. Because neither Jesus, nor Moses, nor, Moses, nor Buddha, nor anyone else ever commanded that we love our religion. Rather, we have to love one another. That's the bottom line. And that's the only true orthodoxy. Love for the stranger, who, in the perspective of Jesus, should always be seen as our neighbor. Love expands the, the boundaries. It increases the borders. It brings us into oneness with one another. In our family, we had an old curmudgeon uncle who was known as Uncle Billy. And let me tell you, Uncle Billy was to the right of right. He was, he would make Attila the Hun look like a, a liberal. Uncle Billy was, well, there's no other word for it. He was a racist. He was uh, a person who uh, believed that his way was the only way. Uncle Billy had one daughter. Her name was Susie. And Susie was a woman of quite a great intellect. She went on to get her undergraduate degree at a university in Louisiana, and then went to graduate school at Vanderbilt and ended up as a professor at Harvard where she teaches today in the English department. Susie married a gentleman, a fine man, whose name was Morris Heisman. He's a Jewish fellow, an architect. And they had one child, a little boy that they named Kit, K-I-T, and they lived in Boston. Now Uncle Billy loved his daughter. He didn't understand her. He didn't always agree with her, but he loved her daughter, his daughter. And more than that, when they were blessed with that little boy, Uncle Billy loved that child. And about every six weeks or so, Uncle Billy would get on a plane in Shreveport, Louisiana and fly up to Boston to see his only grandchild and visit his only daughter. And while there, he was introduced to things that broadened his perspective and enlarged his world. This child grew and became quite proficient at lacrosse. Uncle Billy didn't have an idea of what lacrosse was, never heard of it before. The child grew and went to prep school and came home with hair that was down to here, something that Uncle Billy was not very fond of when he saw it in other people. The child continued to grow and one day came back with a stud in his ear. And that was something that Uncle Billy could have never imagined any family member of his ever doing. But you know what? Uncle Billy loved that boy. And because he did, he was able to push back the boundaries of his own certainty and come to accept the gift of that young man as the grandchild that he was in his life. I did Uncle Billy's memorial service and the opening words were, Uncle Billy was a liberal. Uncle Billy was a liberal. Um, I um, think that that's what love does for us. It expands our world. It increases our horizons. It makes us welcome 
the stranger. So Unitarian Universalist, I invite you continue to hold on to the core of your identity by doing just that in every moment and every opportunity that you have. That's one of the reasons I love the Unitarians. You welcome the stranger and in so doing, you foster good religion in a world that's in desperate need of it. I hope that these have been helpful remarks today and hope that in the near future, we can see one another in person. May you be well and continue to be who you are. This is hymn number 146, Soon the Day Will Arrive. And now I'd like to offer this as a kind of uh, closing thought. Red and yellow, black and white, all are precious in his sight. We are all the children of the mystery of holiness. And it is when we can affirm that and we can welcome that, that we have the kind of world that I think will be a good world to raise our children and to affirm that diversity is a gift and that difference is not deficient, it is just difference. May you be well. So it's all all good. Great, Evan. Thank you so much for your good work and uh, blessings to all in uh, Swannanoa, UU, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks so much, Chris. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. bye. That's it. You're done. I'm done. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>